this is uh, Prime TV and I am Jovito Lopish and you are watching uh, The Rainbow. When we talk uh, of uh, sports and Goa, football is the number one sport undoubtedly. And it has been occupying the prime of the place all these years and it was then, it is now and uh, we think that it will continue so. Cricket has uh, been making slow inroads into the sports scenario of Goa. Earlier it was uh, volleyball and basketball which were very close to football. Cricket of course, it was not there say for about 15 to 20 years and uh, we remember that volleyball and basketball were making uh, solid inroads, lots of programs and uh, I remember that when Father Benedict Furtado was the president of the Goa Basketball Association and he was instrumental uh, from the Don Boscos to launch basketball movement in Goa. Today basketball movement is uh, again with the Don Boscos and we are happy and glad that we have uh, with us the president of the Goa Basketball Association and that's Father Ralino de Souza. Father Ralino, welcome on behalf of the Prime TV. Thank you very much. Father Ralino, you took over at a very critical stage uh, the Goa Basketball Association and uh, we know that we talked about basketball. It was CF Waz who was the prominent person. He even got the Bakshi Bahadur Shiva Dada Kerkar Award for his excellence uh, in uh, the work in basketball. He was uh, primarily responsible for taking our basketball to a quite high level. Unfortunately, he passed away and then we have uh, Father Ralino who has taken over. Father Ralino, it must have been pretty difficult for you to take over the Goa Basketball Association. I think, if I'm not mistaken, about four years. Uh, four years now, just yeah. yeah. It's almost four years that I've taken over. I must say, as you have just pointed out, that it was a difficult time. Just to put the facts in front of you, we had the Lusophonia games that were going to happen. And because of the undress within the association, we had many basketball players and fans who came onto the road. Then uh, we had a CF Faz who suddenly got a heart attack and passed away. And uh, for the recent past, the Basketball Association was under litigation with the case that was filed in which Goa Olympic Association as well as Goa, uh, the Sports Authority of Goa also was involved. And so for almost around, I could say, almost 22, 23 years, there wasn't a single official basketball tournament. So when we took over in 2013, we tried to do something good. In fact, within a month, we organized the state championship. It was almost after 23 years. Then within two months with the Lusophonia, but thanks to the co collaboration we got from the Basketball Federation of India, we had the whole India team along with two Goan cages, both boys and girls who could join the India team. And as we all know, Goa, or Goa India got the gold medal in that championship. And from then we realized that if we have to take the game to a new height and because of the lull, we have to start with something very concrete with the grassroots. Yeah, uh, we had uh, three Lusophonia games as of now. And in the last two Lusophonia games, one uh, was held in Macau in 2016 and the next one was held in Lisbon in Portugal in 2019. And in both of these events, uh, in the uh, Lusophonia games, Goa or India was not represented. But fortunately came 2014 and we had Lusophonia games in Goa and we had this beautiful team which won the gold. How difficult for you was father to make an inroad for the first time because basketball was almost dead, it was non-existent but you sort of made a miracle and then you won the gold. Well, I must give credit to the Federation because uh, at the end of the day, when you have an international tournament, you have to go through the organized uh, structure of the country. If not, you cannot get uh, international teams coming to play. You cannot have international officials coming and officiating. And so when we approached the Federation, they told us, you tell us what you want, we will support you. And then we realized that since basketball wasn't played very vigorously for the last almost, you can see, a decade, we requested the BFI if they could give us the India team. And for the Goa representation, at least allow us four or five. 
but then they suggested uh, that if there are more than four players or three players then the team would weaken and they won't be able to sustain a good strong match so then we said okay fine why don't you have at least two players so that is some goa representation i'm sure if the level was as it is now we would have at least four or five players in the india team so having excelled at the lusophonia games what are your plans now let me tell you what has happened till now <laughs> okay so we started with a very good grassroots training program where we call the india women's coach and the india strength and conditioning coach thomas heffenfield finger and uh, garcia we had a 10 day workshop with them then we had uh, a group of goan students some of them indian six of them from dubai they belong to two academies in dubai basic ball academy and uh, ace academy both of them came down and they wanted to have a program among the children so they went to six schools in goa and uh, one of the you can say success stories was uh, they trained at uh, nuve holy rosary and in the very first tournament that followed which was of the director of sports and youth affairs the district championship in the very first match they defeated loyalas which was a great boost for them and uh, now the other school which is really coming up from the north where they also focused a lot was uh, lutz convent so you have uh, some uh, structure coming up at the grassroots at the youth level and uh, are you happy with uh, the development at the grassroots and the youth I think we need more people to join in to support. Uh, we have very few coaches qualified. Let me be frank with you. We have only two with the SAG. One is uh, really trained, the other one is just on a preliminary course, but already the course is outdated because since last year the FIBA has changed the whole coaching structure in the country. Earlier it was coming directly under FIBA. Now FIBA has given it to a body which was already existing with them which is called as WABC. world association of basketball coaches and they have revamped the whole program the previous program was done with all the european coaches the present program has been done all with australian coaches there is not much of a difference but a lot of new things have been involved in the game and what we have done is like how bfi organizes coaches programs in different parts of the country we were the first ones to have one for goa the wabc preliminary coach which was held around 4 months back we had uh, almost 14 coaches from goa but uh, only six passed the exams <laughs> so i guess we have to learn the game a little more seriously but nonetheless we have got six qualified coaches in goa right now who are trying to take different coaching centers different places there have been other initiatives going on but we are trying to organize this coaching structure a little in fact i myself am fiba level 3 qualified in fact i've just got the invitation to go for the wabc level 2 because they want us to help out in organizing and training more coaches so you follow a particular education pattern for the basketball training in the country and when you talk about the six coaches that have uh, passed out from goa mm -hmm. goa center i mean yeah. uh, are there both uh, men and women or it is only men we have uh, two women one woman passed the other one attended the course but uh, could not uh, i mean didn't want to attend it in the regular manner she is very senior helen pinto she is actually in charge of the coaching that is conducted at uh, lutz convent if the school is coming up it's thanks to her and uh, i must say the other coach is from ponda magdalen she is a student of vpi out here and she was doing a little coaching and training by herself then uh, we were trying to tell her why don't you be your own person so if you get qualified because in goa we don't have qualified people and then you will know how coaching is expected to be done and then when you put it into practice the more you put your heart into it you'll have something that comes out very original and so she has taken the responsibility for the ponda area along with whoever is going to join and and uh, and hence with her what we have done is uh, ensured that if anyone is going to do coaching we will make sure that you will get qualified if you don't get qualified then we are not going to give you support like how officially because then you know we are going to have players who are turning into basketball coaches who really don't have the system of education i'm not being saying that they are doing a bad job but then in the long run if the education is done not done properly for the grassroots then we are going to suffer so if you have trained coaches and if the coaches take the initiative to you know go and do their level 1 level 2 now we have of course introductory level then automatically you will have a system that grows with the grassroots will get the best and i'm sure in the next 4 5 years we will do wonders uh, since uh, basketball is also quite popular among many schools in goa mm -hmm. 
do you have any plans uh, to orient or reorient all this physical education teachers or their school coaches in this uh, new thought of uh, coaching? Well, we have. We are not focusing on that very much, but you are using the physical education teachers, as I can say, only to spread the game in a big manner. Uh, I can tell you what we have, we have done last year. Okay, last year we had two programs for the schools. One which we had like a coaching program that we organized. And the second one we combined with uh, the so-called junior NBA program which was done all over the country. It was done in about uh, 12 cities. Goa was one of them. Uh, we had a target of reaching around 150 schools. But as you know how Goa schools are spread up to reach them becomes a big problem. We managed to get about 95 schools signing in the program. And we had almost around 45 schools that used the program, I must say, considerably well. Now the program was done, in, the first part of the program is that the PT teacher has to come for a program that we conduct for training, which is done by an NBA coach. So the NBA coach came and conducted a workshop out here. The response was not so good, but we had almost around 45 schools. So not so good compared to 150 that we were targeting. And when the schools, the uh, PD teachers went back, they had to conduct the program for a period of three months. We are trying to make sure that we organize the program again this year. Now, in those three months, every week, one PD class has to be basketball. And every training session is given to the teachers, printed with the equipment and everything in their hands. So basically, the PD teacher has to run the program like an education program. The syllabus is given to them, the equipment is given to them. And when they close the program up, there's a common event that is organized by the junior NBA, where uh, last year we had almost around 18 or 20 schools that participated. We hope that if you know the other schools take a little interest, then you know we can get more and more schools participating in the program. So you have uh, some uh, strategy uh, to start with. You have launched, and always the launch is always in a small uh, way. Uh, you have also a very good infrastructure as of now in the form of uh, an indoor stadium, which was not there. Though Don Bosco's have their own indoor stadium. Do you think that this indoor stadium facility at uh, the Taligaon Goa University is being used to its full extent? I think it's uh, basically not used for sports to the full extent. I think if you go by records with the SAG itself, it is rented out to commercial programs as well as exhibitions and talks more number of times than for events. I'm happy that last six months to eight months we had the SEG office that has shifted inside there so they can at least monitor it well. But uh, I feel there should be a little more open program where the sports facilities in the state are open to the sports person first. We can have, you know, you can have exceptions where you conduct an exhibition or you have a program and the others should understand that, you know, you need funds to, to sustain the activity. We do it in Don Bosco's. Yeah, uh, what we have seen uh, of late and all these years uh, that most of the basketball programs were being conducted at the Father Benedict uh, Furtado Indoor uh, Stadium Hall. And uh, even now we don't see many programs happening at uh, Thaligo. We had the Federation Cup that was taking place there. But we had issues with uh, the SAG because of uh, some internal problems that were happening with basketball. Another group trying to claim that you know they are there and because of the confusion that took place, the fees uh, levied on the association were changed. Now to our good luck, we have managed to uh, reproach again and we told them that if it is a Federation tournament and if you have the states from different parts of the country that have come, then how can you call that illegal? If the tournament was not the valid tournament, then you would not have the states coming. That's very obvious. To give an example, the South Asian Championship was supposed to be held in uh, the Northeast. It held already over. And uh, just before the tournament, suddenly at the national level, they did not call the BFI to organize. And they tried to form another group that organized. And FIBA was very straightforward and said that this tournament is not valid. And in spite of four countries registering for the tournament, they pulled out and they had to cancel basketball. So to run a tournament, you have to be with the organized structure. If you are not the legal structure, you will not be able to organize. For the matter of fact, for the last three years, four years that we have been in control of the game, we have sent every national, every team possible 
and uh, in spite of not proper resources coming coming in we've made a rule for ourselves not to get or beg money from the parents because then it looks like you're imposing the the parents to pay because the child and the team but certain basketball lovers and other people have come forward and contributed and we have been able to manage to take our, our team further to our good luck nevia gave us a full support for almost the last 3 years now so the kitting of the of the basketball team of the state is fully sponsored by nevia so at least the jerseys are good quality and you know the players are happy with that uh, it's nice uh, to know that you have been participating in the national championships and do you participate at uh, all levels i mean the senior junior and the sub junior yeah we participate at each and every level okay i must tell you that the first year the performance was not up to the mark in fact we lost every game in the second year with the with the development programs we have done with the grassroots the sub juniors managed to uh, they win one game the youth and the juniors were slowly picking up of course the seniors lost every game but the last year we had a very good performance i we since all of us focus basically at the grassroots and you know the the lower group of children it takes time to build them up but presently i th i think uh, most of us in the association can proudly say that from almost the last sorts of the country the youth is 14th in the country and the juniors are 13th in the country last year they managed to reach the losers knockout finals the juniors lost the youth won so that's how they are 13th and 14th so we've got the ranking which states very clearly and i think for the way the sport is run and with the contribution that we are getting to reach that height is really good which means it's telling us that there is potential in the state if what what is uh, surprising is that you are almost uh, self uh, financing now and despite uh, your personal and everyone's efforts you have managed to scale quite a good height yes uh, i must give you the reason why it happened for the last meeting we had of fiba in uh, october in delhi we had all the fiba officials that came down and they asked us a very point blank question because every state raised the issue of finances and the fiba official told us very clearly because they are changing the whole competition pattern of basketball in the world in fact from november this year it's going to be home and away games and uh, we have to have the facility of international standard in india so the sports federation is working very hard towards that and they've told us a very point blank statement they said every country doesn't sit on their haunches and take the money from the government why is india sitting down and asking the government for the money you can approach the private sector you make your plans you have to perform to get the money from the private sector if the government gives you that's an added advantage and then uh, even we realized over here that we have been only waiting for you know government grants to come in and sometimes the grants take a long time to come in but in the end of the day by the time the grants come in the teams have changed the players have moved on and you know you cannot go back and uh, give the money to who it belongs to and we wanted to work sincerely so we said you know if the money comes in fine but in the meantime if we can get the corporate sector to come inside and support us so we approached two or three right now we have sent appeals to almost around 6 7 two of them have given a very positive response so we hope that you know the others come in line and if they come on board i think there's nothing like it if the sports uh, the government authority or uh, sports authority of india goa and if the others join in then that's going to surely increase the benefits the players are going to get uh, i must appreciate the way that you have absorbed this change in uh, finances and uh, how uh, is your difficult was for you when you knew that uh, not much or nothing was coming from the government well one thing we had said to ourselves we would not stop the activities going on uh when you have a government of course it takes time for the processes and the finances to come in fact we have a huge debt to still pay of the federation cup okay and uh, we have promised the ones whom we have taken the money from is that we have made sure that everything is gone official onto the accounts so we are showing it that you know we it's the amount payable so we are not going to run away from them and as and when we get uh, benefactors coming we are officially going to them and we are thanking them and i must say they are the first benefactors right now but with a good training program and i am sure with more number of people coming in then automatically the pressure mounts on the government because right now it is not like six schools in the past or three schools at the start we are almost touching a, a group of around 40 schools that are sort of integrating the program and we have almost 90 schools that said we are interested in the program so i'm sure if we push it a little more of the total 300 or 400 schools that we have in the state to reach around 100 school is almost 25% of the state
I, I, I must uh, compliment you, Father Raleno, for your beautiful vision that you have. And uh, are you sure that you are on this spot as far as your mission is concerned? I think uh, I have found, in fact, I'm telling this to all the coaches, please don't make basketball a sport. In fact, if you do the FIBA courses, they will tell you basketball is a discipline and basketball is focus. And uh, if you look at most of the training programs we do, almost every skill is associated with a value. The unfortunate part is when you make it a sport, then it becomes entertainment and it becomes part-time. Then uh, you find the guys who take it seriously, who practice by themselves, who have their values of discipline and their focus in place, you find those uh, individuals really excelling. And so for me, it, it is like an option that we can give if you train youth in a proper manner to the so many evils that are there in Goan society. Okay, uh, we all know about the uh, number of drug abuse along the coastal belt. We all know about so many other evils that are attacking our own society. And uh, not that because I'm a priest, but you know, if you're a good teacher and if you're aware of the society, the only way to pull people up to the next level is to give them something that they can work for. And I remember FIBA guy telling us that, you know, during the course that we have done for the coaching, whatever thrill you get in having drugs, you get the thrill in playing the sport. You have the energy, you have the excellence of energy, you have the crowd cheering you and giving, giving you a high. And all that you need is to put proper basics, at the, uh, proper principles at the basics. They, they often talk about this uh, neurotransmitter, dopamine. And because that gives you that high and all that. And they said that dopamine can be used positively as well as negatively. When you talk about drugs, alcohol and all that, that's your negative. But I'm very, very glad that you have gone on a very educative. And I'm hope, uh, I, I know that uh, the youth will uh, benefit. The parents, I think, per se, will be quite happy with your type of thought process. Uh, in fact, I must say we started humbly. Last year, along with uh, three individuals, we started an academy called AOA, which we supported. And uh, what we have done is told very clearly that only qualified coaches will be following the program. And we actually give instructions of how to conduct the coaching and how you evaluate the players. Right now, we have centers in Panjim at Don Bosco's Oratory. We have at Don Bosco's Benauli, and we also have it in Kepe. Fatorda has started a new court, so they are already beginning from uh, probably immediately after the rains, once uh, the grounds are fully done. But they have a good fiber court with uh, basketball boards and lights, so which means we have got another wonderful facility. Okay, hopefully we'll be able to upgrade the facility we already have. The girl from Ponda has willingly said that she will do from Ponda. There's one boy from Mapsa who's done the course well, so even he said he's ready to start another center in Mapsa. We had a coach from Shioli and we had a coach from Santa Cruz. He is uh, Mr. Michael Dias, who is the director for sports at Dempe College. So he is also volunteered to focus more on the college level because he is doing his doctorate now. So I think if we get together a few, we also have one from Vasco. So technically we have targeted, say, Vasco, Ponda, Margao, Mapsa. We have also Kepe. And we are trying to find out with institutions where they are interested, if they can give us the PT teacher. We can give them the basic training, we can give them every session to conduct and probably if you focus on a very systematic manner in which how we can take the, uh, the coaching to a next level, I think it will be very good. As far as the other coaches are concerned, uh, we have uh, the coaching that is held at, uh, at uh, Porvori at the SEG ground conducted by the Sonics Club. Andy is very much associated with that and he also teaches at Britos. We have the coaching that is done at Sholi which is done by Helen Pinto, ex-Goa player, and she is really good with the game, and even she is very much principled. And you can see that uh, the players that are coming there, hardly they are under 16, but I think they are a good challenge even to the senior teams. So with the junior and youth teams doing really well, I think we have a very good promising future. I think uh, Father Ralino is uh, president of the Goa Basketball Association. Father Ralino, you have uh, given us the vision, the mission, and as of today, you have been doing exceedingly well, I should say. And uh, could you share with us your plans for the future? Well, the immediate plan which we are already working for the last almost six months is uh, to have a major league for Goa. We are, instead of organizing it ourselves, to get a better job done and better uh, transparent job done, we have uh, actually approached an uh, event company. The event company will do the, all the logistics of publicity and advertising. 
But what we said is we have seen tournaments organized where a lot of outside players have come and played and at the end of the day we were saying to ourselves we need the game of Goa to improve. If we have other players coming and playing here then you know we can as well watch the games on TV. But uh, if we can give maximum publicity and maximum uh, impetus to the people out here, then the game will come to the next level. So in fact, uh, we are proposing to have a kind of a trial tournament in July. And the official league, if all goes well, will take off in November, which is going to be for four weekends. Not in one place, it will be in four different places in Goa. So everybody gets a chance to see. And totally done or totally run by an event company. The association will be officially giving permission, then we will conduct the game in a disciplined manner. So, you know, once we have a lot of backhand force that gives us the, the publicity in the platform, then it's a matter of putting the players in the front. What we have decided is to make sure that the youngsters get a, get a good uh, backing. We've realized that there is a big gap between under 19 to the senior teams. So we've decided to stop the team, the game for only those under 25. For the sake of experience, we'll allow two players from above 25. And for the sake of mixing around with good professional players, we're allowing two players from outside the state. But that the teams will have to decide. You have uh, the strategic planning in place, Father. And I'm sure with this type of vision that you have, the future for basketball looks to be pretty bright. And I'm sure that uh, if uh, this trend continues, basketball will come up. There will be a resurgence or a revival of basketball. It all uh, is what is needed is a united effort, one thinking, one wavelength uh, among all the stakeholders. And uh, we wish uh, that basketball comes up of age and there's a revival. And... Uh, Everything is taken in a very positive manner. This is Prime TV and I am Jovit Lopish and you have been watching The Rainbow.